Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I am showing you my lace front Matilda wig from Artiwigs. Um, I've tried it on so I've already split up the uh, lace a bit and I'm just coming through and very carefully trimming the lace as close to the hairline as I can get it. Um, you, you just, you want to make sure to not like you know cut any of the hair and you don't it's hard to repair this so it's a good idea to try to do it correctly the first time um in hindsight I kind of wish I had waited to do this um because I was gonna I decided after this video um I, after shooting it that I wanted to ventilate the front of the wig um and having a little bit more lace there would have been really nice <laughs> so this is what the Matilda wig looked like pretty much just fresh out of the bag I haven't done any styling I haven't brushed it at all Ugh, there's the super freaky Vonkenstein um, or Franken Von this is what the wig looked like after right running a wide tooth uh, comb through it and then here are just some pictures of what I'll be doing um, I was kind of getting the feel for it. You can see that large bronze colored pin is one of the pins that I have holding the wig into place onto the head. This is just a styrofoam head that I expanded with some batting and painter's tape, which is why it looks horrific. And I keep adding in an alternation of turquoise, sky blue, and aqua. It's much more uh, turquoise down at the bottom, much more aqua at the top, um, and sky blue in between. Now, here you can see I have pinned a weft over another weft, and I'm coming through with this curved, like, mattress needle. Um, it's just, it's a curved needle, uh, and it's working perfectly. Um, I have my mannequin head, like my wig block, um, on a microphone stand, so it isn't really holding on very well. Like, it keeps spinning around on me, so bear with me. Um, but I'm just trying my best to keep my stitch stitches equidistant and to not snag anything other than the weft below it. And I'm going to be giving you guys a bunch of different angles of what we're doing here as well. So you can see uh, just hooking through the front one and hooking through the bottom one. You, there's kind of like a railroad track of stitches going through the wefting and I'm trying to get in between those railroad tracks, those parallel stitch lines, um, just so I, I want this to be very nice and secure. Also as I pull through, I'm trying to not tangle uh, any of the wig hair, and so it has been very helpful to have the top layers, like the rest of the hair of the wig, um, clamped up. Some of the wefts that I got um, are long wefts, from Arta Wigs um, in their, I think it's either their classic or their silky, I don't recall off the top of my head, but I, the reason I got them so long was they didn't have the, um, the colors that I wanted in the short wefts. I'm going through with some thinning shears, just kind of like cutting and then pulling down to get some of the bulk out of the way, um, and then I'm just just snipping through, <laughs> like top, 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 uh, and these shears are excellent for, um, just kind of giving it a very jagged, wild, um, like fringed edge, as opposed to a very blocky, snipped line. Um, and they came in a kit that I got. I'll have links to all the tools and materials used in this video down in the video description box below. Um, and it's coming through with my regular uh, trimmers, like scissors, and just snipping to trim those longer wefts to match. And I'm, I saved all of my extra hair that I was trimming off um, for the most part to get it to be, you know, to use for other things like dreads and stuff. So this is what it, it starts to look like after doing most of all of the horizontal lines of the wig. Now here I've come to the front. Um, I pulled the all of the lace front hair into a braid and then I pulled back one layer of wefting. Um, and I'm using these straight pins to pin it open to um, expose the weft underneath it. It's much more uh, densely, like very, very dense wefts here on the crown of the wig. And I'm just using a rat tail comb to try to separate it all out just as much as I can. Taking this extra step of prep work 
made my life so much easier. Um, because, you know, you don't want to be fighting with your string and your needle and everything the whole time. Here I'm taking a weft of the Aqua. Um, I believe it's Aqua in Silky. And this was a short weft, so I didn't have to trim it or anything. Um, and I'm just coming through and pinning it very carefully. The steps that you take in your preparation, you know, these steps, making sure that the weft is positioned well, and then pinning it, again, is going to make going through and stitching it so much easier. And I also, with these shorter wefts, I was much more able to um, just uh, kind of work off of the roll <laughs> like it's not really a roll but off of the package and then trim as needed as where the long wefts I went through and I had them hanging I might do a separate video on how I suspend them <laughs> to keep it from being just a tangled horrific mess and then measuring what I needed but yeah couldn't find my scissors <laughs> and then whenever I trim the weft I come through and just very carefully snip in between you can see there's little segments of hair and I'm saving all of these little uh, for lack of a better term scrap pieces of um, of weft because I'm going to use this uh, hair to ventilate the lace front um, to help get the color blend in there as well a little later on just very carefully positioning and pinning <laughs> It's, this is nothing if not repetitive. <laughs> then, oh, I love the way that these blues and stuff look, though. Giving it a quick just positioning, getting things out of the way with a wide-toothed comb. And then we're going to come through again with our curved needle. And um, I have a full arm span of thread that I folded in half like threaded the needle, folded it in half, and knotted it at the end. And then I kind of like loop through the knotted bit and then you can see here I've pulled it down. That way it makes a closed loop. And that's how I start off each of my um, attaching my wefts. Coming through, this is a different angle than what I'd been sewing at um, for like the rest of the wig. So I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting the needle to go through. You want to make sure you don't get tangled through any of the other hairs. I got tangled really bad. Um, and then whenever you're pulling through, make sure you don't suck in any of the uh, other hairs of the wig. They're going to want to follow the thread and bunch up and kind of make a mess. There we go. Kind of struggling to pull the needle through. It's You'll get the hang of it. From the best advice that I could give anyone, including my past self who was you know sewing this wig together, be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient Patient with the project. Um, and don't, you know, hesitate to kind of walk away from it for a little bit. If you need to take half an hour or, you know, just a little bit of a 15 minute break and go stretch a bit, do something else, you've got this because it, the project will be there waiting for you. <laughs> um, so now I've come around to the end, just stitched all the way around. I leave my pins in typically until the end of the weft and then just kind of do it all in one go. That way I don't accidentally forget a pin in and then poke myself when I try the wig on. But yeah, I do quite a, like three or four stitches at the very end and then I back stitch two or three stitches um, before knotting off and uh, trimming and moving on to the next weft. I really prefer sewing left or uh, right to left. Um, now you can see here, coming through separating out another layer and the way that these wefts are so densely woven it gives it a really nice effect but just you know having the right tool for the job really makes a difference and this one you can see it's pretty dense but using those pins to pin that open and throughout the back part of the wig I was every single weft I was putting another weft on, uh, like every single layer. Here in the top part, like the crown of the wig, since it's so densely woven, um, I was doing every other uh, weft. And so my color concentration is a little blonder up top, but really I think that's okay anyhow. <clears throat> 
that yeah it's a if you start to get frazzled and your threads uneven or um, you know you start tangling the hair up just take a breath and you know straighten sort sorting everything out and uh, and then just keep on stitching <laughs> but this uh, this wig took me probably two days to eight to ten hour days of constant work um, hand stitching everything and now granted this was my first wig to do this to um, so I definitely learned a lot from other youtubers um, if I remember to I'll try to find their, their links and uh, link them in the uh, video description down below but I really recommend their tutorials they're very informative and just kind of stitching through just more of the same and it's something that uh some of my cosplay friends and other costumers you know speak like that like doing wig wefting is traumatizing and it's but i've done a fair bit of hand stitching like hand sewing in the past and i've woven entire shirts of chain mail so this actually was not as tedious as weaving a shirt of chain mail is um like i just chained a bunch of deep space nine on netflix and uh and really, really enjoyed doing this, actually. Struggling to get my needle through. But here on the end, it was just a little too long, so I folded it over and did a couple of stitches through it. And now I'm doing my couple of back stitches. And again, I just wanted to show you guys a lot of different perspectives. Um, and, you know, sometimes you have to go in at a funny angle to get the needle through without snagging anything. So, um... Fortunately, with this wig, it's so densely woven, I'm not really having to worry about um, <laughs> my stitches showing. So I used a thread that I have um, that just matched the hair color as good as I could get it. And then just coming through and doing the stitches. Now, if I re I'll try my best to put links down in the video description to the other styling um, videos that I'm going to be doing about this wig because I'm going to be styling this I think into a very curly updo so I'm going to be doing a couple more videos on how to add wefts to the inside of the wig to so whenever I pull it up into an updo it'll look um, much more realistic I'm going to be doing a video on how I'm going to be doing the ventilating on the lace front of this wig as well as I'm going to be modifying the hairline a little bit I think to give it maybe a widow's peak I think that'd be kind of cute but I'm definitely gonna keep you guys posted um, as I progress so you can see here coming through pulling that bits of hair forward and this one's super close together um, these two wefts like you can see there's barely any room at all in between them between these two blonde layers and that's the color of base wig that I'm using here is a titanium blonde sorry I feel like I'm all over the place with the commentary but that's kind of just how it goes <laughs> so yeah very very close together um so that's one layer of the blonde then so I'm gonna come back another layer just trying to find the edge and um with the Arda wigs, I feel like being very well constructed, you can see this this layer has a lot more space in between the two. So um, I would even skip maybe another one that if it were very densely woven just to get to one that would be easy to sew in like this one. But they the Arda wig already had a very easy to follow format and layout of wefting going on um so i felt very confident in being able to just follow along like almost tracing <laughs> i felt like because i didn't have to decide where to put any of the wefts because they already had established weft placement that i just went through and connected so here you can see it's a beautiful braid um the way that the colors blended together i just i went through i used up three packs i used up the aqua um Oh, and you know, I've got like maybe a couple inches left, but I used up the aqua, sky blue, and turquoise um, wefts. And you can just see some of the different color shifting and stuff here. And this is under, uh, you know, synthetic lighting, but, or artificial, <laughs> artificial lighting. Um, and these are heat resistant synthetic fibers. Um, 
but I'm really excited to show you guys in future tutorials uh, what's going on with all that with the styling and stuff. I love the depth, how it was more turquoise and sky blue towards the bottom, and then, you know, sky blue through the center, and then aqua and sky blue up on the surface, mixed in with that titanium blonde. Um, definitely made the wig super duper heavy, um, but I'll be doing tutorials as well on how I get this to stay on my head, so we'll figure that out. I just wanted to demonstrate to you guys, like, a quick little messy braid the the different highlights and lowlights and how this came out um makes me so happy <laughs> um I, and i really plan on using this technique a lot in future wigs just to be able to get a really nice custom color blend um because i actually color matched these wefts to the fabric that i'm going to be using for the chemise that this uh of the costume that this is going along with so i'll try to uh you know, again, y'all can just check out my cosplay playlist to see all the different videos of how it's coming together. That's how a braid looks. This is how just a twist looks. And I'm just really, really pleased. You could do this in any kind of color scheme that you wanted. Uh, I think possibly a something I might tackle in the future would be a rainbow inlay wig. You know, where I go through and do all the different colors of the rainbow in layers um mixed into a wig just to see how that might come out because so i think this the style of coloring really lends itself to like french braids <laughs> you know in different things so um think and i could i could brush this wig forever like i just love playing in her hair uh if you all have any questions comments or ideas i would love to hear from you um if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to share some of your own work please check me out on Facebook and Instagram. You can tag me on Instagram or uh, share stuff to my wall on Facebook. You can also support us on Patreon. Um, as little as a dollar a month goes towards putting your name in the hat for our fairy house giveaways. Um, we do monthly craft crates. We do digital downloadable content. We also do um, almost daily behind the scenes sneak peeks. Um, so that's something that's really fun uh, for if you guys, you know, just want to you know see more of what goes into making the videos and things so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i'm really excited to start again on another new path with you guys this costume that this wig is going with is, is really pushing me and challenging me to do a lot with casting wig work um thermoplastics all sorts of different stuff so really excited to share that with you guys so thanks again and happy crafting i'll see you all around Bye. <laughs>